Hello, everybody. My name is Seal the DM, and we're back. Let me just close that book here uh, with a recap for the city, or as it is known to my players right now, the Shattering. Having woken up at the start of the end of the world and discovered that there is a now almost an ocean uh, before them, or before there was land and forest, um, the party, in a bit of a confused state, tried to gain control of their sensibilities and attempted to use their magic um, to try and contact other people. However, they quickly found out that any sort of divine magic seemed to not be working. Levy was unable to cast any spells. Uh, neither was Siren the Druid, and the Celestial Summoner Kovalin couldn't summon uh, Basiri. Thraga, undaunted by this, looked around at all the trees that had recently fallen when the earth shattered, and decided they needed to fucking build a boat. <laughs> and that was for probably the first three quarters of the session, uh, was Darnik and Thraga building a book, uh, the boat together, while the others explored the area around and just attempted to sort of take stock of what was going on. Gathered some wood for a fire, uh, picked up some berries, found out that the berries were probably poisonous, but Levy, who is immune to poisons, just gets crazy stupid high off of them. Um, and it was mostly just roleplay with repeated attempts to construct the raft. And actually, they did, like, really good. Over the course of um, a day or so, a uh, day and a half, um, Threga and Darnik had actually constructed, like, a decent-looking raft. I mean, it leaked, but not at a rate that couldn't be bailed out by the other people who were paying attention. They also made a few oars to help give them some actual direction. Um, early on the next day, after eating a breakfast and keeping Levy out of the berries, um, uh, they put their raft, their boat, into the water and got aboard and very cautiously set out. Um, now, you'll notice that some characters don't really do a lot in this session. Um, Potato and Kovalin's player uh, did not arrive at all, uh, which was expected for Potato, and we were told like in advance of that, uh, but Kovalin's player just didn't show up. So, I normally wouldn't even have had the session. Um, uh, but we assumed that they were going to show up later, since that was what they had told us, and they never said anything different. Uh, but of course, they did not. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> sailing their way out and across, Siren attempted, before they left, to turn into some aquatic creatures that he had known of. Um, like a dolphin or something, but mm, its wild shaping didn't seem to work either, since all of his magic is fueled from a religious source. Um, into the boat, they set off, hopefully going straight south. Um, and after rowing for most of the day, they actually spotted a ship. It looked pretty beat the fuck up and a little damaged. Um... It was just sort of going derelict, just sort of sailing under its own power, The, just sort of going on the current, its sails ruined. Um, they moved up beside it and attached some rope, and Midnight climbed up and found a fair number of dead bodies. Um, it looked like there had been some sort of fight, um, spell fire, cannon fire maybe, like, uh, or ballista wounds, and a few ballista relic large spear-like uh, ballista arrows uh, sort of like jabbed into the ship at odd angles and it definitely looks like some of the crew got hit by some of that stuff. Um, but a quick look around for Midnight determined that no one was alive. Um, so they all climbed their way onto the ship and started looking around. Um, they found a bit of coin on the dead bodies they did a bit of exploring, one went up to what appeared to be, like, a captain's private room, did a little rummaging around, but it was mostly, like, ruined maps that are 
definitely out of date now. Um, the place looked like it had been hit pretty hard. Um, exploring below deck, uh, they found another dead body in the kitchen. Uh, sort of sprawled out. Uh, and found a, a hefty amount of food and supplies that they used to refill their water skins and whatnot. Having realized that they had only had the water they had with them until the religious casters could regain their spells. Exploring deeper, they found a series of rooms with cots, uh, which were clearly uh, the bedrooms of the crew. And a door that was closed with, like, a keep outside, like, written in several languages. Um, so being curious, they pushed into the room and found a large cargo dock, basically. Like, a huge, uh, this, the majority of the hull of the ship, uh, was sort of devoted to cargo. Uh, huge barrels, uh, many mesh nets sort of storing across the ceiling to optimize their room full of sacks. Uh, and crates. Uh, just a whole ton of shit. Like, so much stuff. Um, and at the very front of it was a large chest, uh, which had a dagger sort of pinned to the top holding a note that once again said, do not fucking open this. Um, so the party did a little bit of exploring, and Midnight looked around and very closely investigated the chest, uh, and determined that it didn't appear to be locked, but it did appear to be trapped. He couldn't quite figure out how it was trapped, but it was very clear to the keen-eyed rogue that it was trapped. And the party hemmed and hawed a little bit to figure out what to do. At one point, Mage Hand was suggested, which would have probably been a good idea. Um, <laughs> however, uh, before any of this was even attempted, Levy just ran up and decided, ah, I'm going to open it. Uh, which, as it turned out, was not the best idea. As Levy opened the box and flipped the lid up very quickly, she didn't notice the slight bit of resistance uh, that her hands just pushed through, and no one else around her really had a good view of it, um, as it sort of pulled the internal ripcord uh, on a necklace of fireballs, dropping fireballs, uh, all in one spot, right centered on the chest. Uh, suffice to say, it was a lot of damage. Uh, blew open uh, a hole in the ship, which began pouring the cargo into the water, which was now rushing its way up. Um, as Midnight, who thankfully was like out of most of the blast completely, other than just being blown sort of away, uh, turned around and saw Darnik, who had, like, almost exactly one hit point, clutching a very dead-looking Zon, uh, and passed that to what remained of Levy. Uh, there was a lot of panic, and uh, Midnight ran in and quickly picked up what they could of Levy, as the boat suddenly began to tip forward, and... The sudden opening that was very bright as there was a hole in the ship all of a sudden uh, got very dark as the ship sort of fell back down towards the water and water began rushing into the opening and the boat began to sink in head first. Uh, Thruga came running down confused what had happened and saw uh, just the horrible state everyone was in and quickly uh, grabbed a hold of them and started pushing them up the stairs, helping Midnight with Levy anytime he needed it. Uh, and Darnik just sort of cradled Zon and ran as well. Uh, they got out and got to the ship where Siren, Kovalin, and Valinor, whose player is no longer with the campaign for at least six months due to the army, uh, were just in the boat, like, freaking out, asking what was going on. Uh, everyone jumped and made their way down into the raft and cut their boat free. And as the other boats sink, they tried to push themselves away to try to avoid being, like, sucked in with any air or current being dragged in with the boat. Um, and it was just a whole lot of chaos and panic. And uh, the boat was fully submerged, and they'd managed to get their little raft sort of out of the way enough to avoid getting pulled into any of the debris. Uh, any of the flotsam, because that's what that would be for the most part, it would be a lot of flotsam. 
um, and a lot of derelict, technically, but that's 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 not really what the flotsam is. Uh, and as they sort of push back and just sort of realize what had happened, most of them in shock and Thruga just trying to like deal with what was happening as best as he could. Uh, they spotted that on the other side of the ship that they hadn't seen as they came out and ran to their boat uh, was another ship very rapidly approaching them and uh, running colors, not that on like a pirate. The ship pulled up along there so they could hear people moving and see bodies. One in particular, this burly ogress with a huge bird sort of perched on its shoulder. And as the ship pulled up to them and a bunch of armed sailors came and sort of lined the edge to look down at the the boat, the little dinghy, uh, with its two very, very dead people in it and the rest of the party... Um, an elf or half-elf looking figure stepped forward wearing much finer clothes and called on down uh, about how intrigued they were to find something like this along the way. Um, and that's where we left off. Uh, again, on just like the Ixalan session recap this week, not a, not a whole ton happened. But in this case, it wasn't because there was just a whole lot of fun RP going on. It was just we were down three players from what has been the norm recently. Um, and this campaign session probably wouldn't have happened had I known that Kovalin's player just wasn't going to show up. Uh, because, yeah, we're, the way our numbers are now, it just it's not enough people for what we do. Uh, it... I, I run this campaign a lot, and not everyone runs into the ship. I do love this campaign, the city. Uh, not everything ends up the same at every playthrough. Uh, but of the people who have found this ship in particular, this was the first group to actually determine that the chest was trapped. Uh, so I figured that meant that they would be safe. They'd either find a way to disarm it or not risk it. But boy, was I wrong. Uh, so yeah, uh, everyone's a little concerned uh, going into the next week's session, everyone's a little panicked, <laughs> and, uh, the players who didn't show up, uh, were quite shocked to find out what had happened. Um, and we're gonna be picking up there next week, um, and hopefully early next week I'll be doing the upload for the, <coughs> excuse me, uh, the Frontier and the Sands of Calamere sessions. Um, yeah, I want to thank everyone for coming by. Uh, hopefully our beloved Zahn and Levy will be okay. Um, and yeah, if you would be so interested, I'd highly recommend checking me out on Patreon at www.patreon.com slash My newest D&D book is available on my Patreon for Patreon members, uh, for my patrons. Um... They, uh, which is the Inner Species Freedom, um, available for, uh, $4.99 on DM's Guild as well, or, uh, $1 by becoming a patron. Um, if you're interested in a fun, exciting book about sex and just giving rules for sexual encounters, action economy, uh, resource management, and just turning sex into an actual D&D encounter... Um, I'd highly recommend looking it up. It's just a little passion project I had recently, and it was a lot of fun to put together, and I have ideas for more supplementary stuff for it. Um, but yeah, I want to thank everyone for coming by. Hopefully, our two friends will be back with us soon. Hopefully. Uh, we'll find out next session, though, won't we? Have a good day.